Hello, uh, this is our second uh, video on modes of heat transfer uh, and we'll cover convection and radiation. Okay, the second mode of heat transfer is convection, uh, which in some ways is just a, a variation on conduction. It combines conduction, that is the interaction of molecules banging against each other, uh, with the advection with the bulk motion of fluid material. And both of those processes serve to move thermal energy from one space uh, to another. So we can talk about convection moves thermal energy, both because it's taking a whole bulk fluid and moving that higher temperature or lower temperature uh, fluid to another place, and because there's convection happening at the uh, at the molecular level. One of the key uh, aspects of convection is that it's much more effective at transferring uh, heat uh, and at reaching some kind of thermal, thermal equilibrium uh, than conduction is. Okay, So we have a rate equation for conduction here, again something you uh, saw in 2.11, um, where temperature difference is key right because that's what heat transfer is uh, the transfer of thermal energy because of temperature difference uh, multiplied by h and h is our conduct or, or rather our convection uh, coefficient it's very similar to k in some sense in that it uh, tells us oh the amount of heat transfer is going to be proportional to our temperature difference but h has a lot more going on in it uh, it has to do with um, materials and usually with two materials uh, with the way that the fluid is moving with the patterns of is it laminar flow or turbulent flow um, there are all sorts of different ways uh, that convection works and so H can vary uh, hugely right from values in the single digits up to values uh, in the tens of thousands um, and so H we isn't a material component it's a it's a environmental component uh, that we need to figure out experimentally. All right, so why are rates of conduction much higher than convection? Um, it's because the uh, convection actually enhances conduction. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you think about this uh, little cabin here, cute little uh, gravity furnace, um, if there were no motion, bulk fluid motion, the air right here would get really hot, right? But it would just sit there. And then you'd think, well, how much energy is leaving our furnace? Well, remember, conduction heat transfer happens because of temperature difference. If the air around this gets to be, you know, I don't know, 90 degrees Celsius, um, there's going to be a lot less heat transfer uh, from the furnace to that air, right? Because they're gonna, you're gonna have a hot furnace next to hot air, uh, there's gonna be less heat transfer. Um, so what does convection do? It moves that hot air away, and in this case, it's called natural convection because it's doing it just because of buoyancy. Um, it takes that energy, um, or rather that hot air, and moves it away from the hot furnace replaces it with a cold furnace and now you've got the super hot furnace uh, with cold air next to it and conduction is going to work much more effectively so it's uh, partially it's effective because it's actually physically moving that air around right but also it's effective because it's making conduction work better it's creating places where something really hot is next to something really cold that's the same as when, when wind makes you feel cold. If you stand in a really still area, uh, basically the air right around your body starts to heat up a little bit. Uh, wind comes and sweeps that away, uh, and now you've got nice cold air next to your skin. <laughs> and you've got a brisk Midwestern winter day. Okay, so we can do that naturally with buoyancy, as in the case of this um, hot air rising here, or we can also have what's called forced convection if we had a fan there moving that air, uh, uh, purposely creating convective effects. All right, 
So uh, the last uh, mode of heat transfer is radiation. And so this is significantly different than uh, conduction and coefficient. And it has to do with electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic waves, uh, which is essentially what radiation is. So molecules have internal charge imbalances. So uh, no matter what, uh, oftentimes you're going to have a molecule that's actually asymmetrical, right? And so you're, it's easy to imagine like water uh, is going to have hydrogen, two hydrogens and, a, and an oxygen. And so you're going to have uh, an imbalanced uh, set of protons and electrons. Uh, but even a, in a simpler molecule, you're going to have electrons in different places. Um, well, that's how <laughs> we'll get into the quantum stuff. But essentially, you're going to have uh, some kind of internal charge imbalance uh, in any molecule. And those molecules are moving. Uh, and so those, uh, uh, those, as those molecules move, the imbalances uh, change. Uh, and we know that a disturbance in a field uh, creates a wave. Uh, and so these disturbances in the magnetic, electromagnetic fields around the molecules uh, create electromagnetic waves. So the fact that you have uh, uh, charge imbalances and emotion means that you're constantly having changing electromagnetic fields, which sends out electromagnetic waves which is radiation. So those waves carry uh, energy uh, away from any molecule that's actually in motion. Uh, so radiation, because of its electromagnetic nature, does not require a medium. In other words, you can't talk about, uh, you don't have to worry about what it's uh, traveling through um, because, well, that's not entirely true, but um, it can move through nothing. Uh, that, that electromagnetic wave doesn't need matter to transfer that thermal energy in the same way that conduction uh, and convection need matter. Uh, and the best example of this, of course, is the sun, right? Where is all of our energy coming from? This giant fire, uh, and <laughs> you know, eight light minutes away, uh, that is traveling through nothing. That radiation is reaching the earth, despite the fact that there, is, there aren't molecules in between the sun and the earth to bang together. Uh, like conduction and convection, we have a rate equation. The crazy thing about this rate equation is that term right there, right? To the fourth. Uh, so that is a huge increase uh, based on temperature. Uh, so something like the sun that is very hot, <laughs> a giant ball of incandescent gas, uh, is going to emit a ton of radiation while something that is cold or even, you know, what we think of as room temperature is going to have a pretty modest uh, uh, radiation because of that, uh, that term right there. Uh, so here we have the emissive power, which is a term of flux uh, that tells us, okay, this has to do with the surface. We'll look at these terms in a second. Uh, that epsilon is a uh, is a constant, but mostly it has to do with temperature. Always when we talk uh, in conduction and convection, we can use Celsius, uh, but when we deal with radiation, we have to deal with K because it's about how fast those molecules are moving, right? Uh, and that's what K, that's what the Kelvin scale tells us. Um, and so we have to use K and then, uh, I, I'm, the emissivity here uh, is a constant, or not a constant rather, but it's a coefficient that has to do with the surface um, of your material, and it values from zero to one. So you can look, this image is kind of a cool little image, of, like this is an infrared camera, right? What are we seeing here? Well, when we look at something, our eyes are receiving radiation, right? Electromagnetic radiation. We can just see a small range of it. So an infrared camera is uh, basically just showing us a different kind of radiation uh, that's coming off the surface. Uh, and a lot, and that particular, those wavelengths, the infrared uh, wavelengths, carry a lot of um, that the thermal energy uh, that's emitted for earth scale temperatures. And that's why an infrared camera works. All right. 
Last thing about radiation, which we'll sort of hit again at the end of the term, uh, is that they don't just emit radiation, I've said everything emits radiation, but things receive it too. So you might ask, well, why doesn't everything just slowly cool down as it loses its energy? The reason is, is it's constantly receiving energy uh, from other people. So, uh, you know, as you're sitting at your uh, desk, you're radiating energy out, uh, but you're also receiving energy from your classmates, which is, you know, <laughs> a swell idea. Um, we're all, we all depend on each other. So we can talk about uh, emission, but we can also talk about irradiation G. Um, uh, and like emission, uh, different surfaces are going to uh, absorb or reflect that radiation depending on the surface. So like a, a silver coated mirror uh, is going to have a really low um, alpha value here, uh, which means it's not going to absorb very much energy, right? Or an aluminum foil, something like that. Uh, but a black t-shirt is going to absorb quite a bit of it. Uh, and oftentimes uh, that alpha and that epsilon are similar values. Uh, and so we can simplify our equations to um, the difference between the energy emitted and the energy received is going to have to do with um, this value, if again these two are equal, the Boltzmann constant, and then the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. But that, that to the fourth term remains in both of those cases. Notice this is not T surface minus T surroundings to the fourth. You take each term to the fourth first which means if this is 1,000 degrees Kelvin and this is 100 degrees Kelvin, this becomes almost meaningless, okay? Um, because 1,000 to the fourth is much, much, much bigger uh, than 100 to the fourth, okay? And that's radiation. <laughs>